I cannot believe the Vancouver Canucks actually did this. So today when I was at work, I was just honestly not working, scrolling on Twitter. I hit a random refresh and saw that the Vancouver Canucks were rumored to be buying out Oliver Ekman Larson. And this absolutely blew my mind. So it's obviously no secret that the Canucks need to clear cap space. I was wondering how they were going to go about doing this. And it turns out they did end up buying out Oliver Ekman Larson to help with their cap problems. So I'm going to kind of break it down, give you guys my opinion from a Vancouver Canucks fan perspective. And just, yeah, give you my whole breakdown on the whole thing. So of course, if you guys are new to the channel and you guys like this content, it would mean a lot if you guys subscribed and liked the video if you enjoyed. I plan on making a lot more sick content here in the offseason, some stuff based around the draft and just all hockey stuff in general so it would mean a lot if you guys stuck around by hitting the subscribe button and let's get into it so there was a lot to break down about this i at first was kind of taken back and almost upset and the only reason i was upset is because it just brought back memories of the trade to begin with on how we acquired oliver ekman larson and obviously i can't look back at that i keep seeing so many canuck fans dwelling on that trade and it's so easy to dwell on it because it's probably one of the worst in i would argue nhl history definitely canucks history so it's it's so easy to fall back and just get upset about that trade to begin with for those of you who do not know it was louis erickson jay beagle anton roussel a first round pick which was ninth overall and a second and a seventh i think for I believe there was a pick involved, Oliver Ekman Larson and Connor Garland. Maybe there was no pick coming Canucks' way. I'm trying to remember. This was so so long ago, to be honest. The way I saw it when I broke it down is that the Canucks traded ninth overall for Connor Garland. Not a fair one-for-one -one trade, but I, I still to this day think Connor Garland's a good piece. And the fact that people are saying that Connor Garland should be traded like as a cap dump is ridiculous to me. I think he is actually a consistent 60-point player when he's playing well. And I, I think that's how he is. That's how he should be continuously throughout his career. I think last year was a hell of a year for for Vancouver I don't think he was utilized properly and I genuinely think he's better than how he was last year as his year before that and the year before his last year in Arizona he was really good so I do think Connor Garland is good and worth the money he's getting 100% in my opinion but that's how I looked at it was Connor Garland for the first then the second for OEL I wouldn't have even traded a seventh for OEL at the time, but sure, our GM, for whatever reason, Benning thought a second for OEL was fair, and then the other draft picks were pretty much just for cap space. It was because of the cap space we were getting rid of, though we were acquiring a ton. So enough about that. Let's talk about this buyout, because I just started rambling there for a little bit. The Canucks needed to clear cap space going into next season. They were over the cap limit, and as a team that still had some players to sign, like I believe it, Ethan Bear, Travis Dermott, I think there's some other players maybe Travis Dermott I don't remember regardless we had to sign some players and we have to be under the cap which we were over so it was an, it was a no-brainer that the Canucks needed to clear some cap now the biggest thing was obviously trading a player trading a player like Brock Besser who ended up saying he wanted to stay in Vancouver so there goes that trading a guy like Connor Garland who still has three more years four more years left on his contract trading a guy like Bolivier who's got one more year maybe a guy like Tyler Myers who makes a ton you can trade him 50 percent he's got one year left maybe he's worth that three million dollars to have on your team on your bottom pair or something like that that's still obviously a possibility but what it came down to is the Canucks GM did not want to give up assets in order to move cap that's been the number one thing for Alvin and Rutherford is they said they just don't want to move assets to clear cap it's something they don't want to do they also said they didn't plan on doing a buyout, but here we are today. I think what it came down to is so many teams saw that the Canucks needed to make a trade and saw that they were so desperate to clear cap that they were offering just King's ransom. They were saying like, you got to give us your first round pick and we'll take a player like Connor Garland, which is ridiculous in my opinion. And the Canucks clearly were not willing to do that as they think they can trade guys like this without clearing their futures and more draft picks and just prospects and whatever it may be i think they they feel that they could get rid of some cap without doing that but unfortunately teams saw that they had to trade pieces and move cap out so they were taking advantage of it and just exploiting it which is totally understandable so the canucks saw the only thing they can do to clear cap right now today and that's buy out Oliver Ekman Larson. This year is probably the best year to do it. Every other year after that, it gets significantly worse against the cap. And this year was the best year to do it. We'll break down the numbers, but let me tell you why I think they did it and why this could actually be beneficial. So first of all, OEL had to go. He's just not good in general. I would 
personally pay the money that you're paying to keep him out of the roster than to pay his full salary and have him on the second pair or bottom pair. It's just not worth it, in my opinion. And as well as going back to me saying it's just the best year to do it, it just all makes sense. Not only this, Canucks are now $6 million, $7 million-ish above the cap floor. And then if you put players like Tanner Pearson and whoever else is injured on LTIR, I believe there's another person, we're sitting at around $12 million under the cap. So we're actually looking pretty good. And what this does is this now takes that leverage that these teams thought they had for against us and takes it away where the Canucks now we're kind of going into it like we don't have to trade anyone. We could go in with our exact same roster and just play. We could just ride it out and just play and see what happens and hope we have a better year. So they're not as desperate to make a trade, which maybe makes some teams who were originally trying to get more be like, OK, like we'll take a little bit less to get that player because that player is not actually that bad. And we kind of do want him at the end. And so those teams that were kind of almost scamming us in a sense, they can no longer do that, or at least not as much. So personally, I am okay with the, the bio. I think it was the only thing that could happen. So many people are freaking out saying this is last resort. What are they doing? But 100% it is last resort. And I think at the end of the day, our GM saw all the trade offers and all the options to trade out cap and none of it made sense. A lot of it was probably just getting rid of good picks and just ruining the team's future. And they're like, why are we going to do that to get rid of one player when we always have this backup plan in our arsenal to buy him out like they always had that option so why would they just give up our first round pick and other futures when they they have a backup plan and i think that's just what they went with they went with their backup plan instead so i'm totally okay with that to quickly break down the numbers it's actually not too too bad so this year coming up He's not really costing anything against the cap. That's how we have a full $7 million freed up from him. He's not eating up any of the cap currently. So we're, we're pretty good this year. Next year, his cap hits $2.3 million. Still not actually that bad. The year after that and the year after that, though, it goes to 4.7. That's a little bit worse. That's going to hurt. But luckily, then you're going to have that's after next season. So you're going to have Tyler Myers off the book. You're going to have Tanner Pearson off the book. You're going to have some other players who just are no longer uh, Bolivier as well. You're going to have some some freed up cap space from those players, as well as hopefully the salary cap increasing. And then for the next four years after that, it goes to two point one million dollars again. I would pay $2.1 million to not have Ekman Larson playing in my lineup 100%. And for those Canuck fans out there that's like, well, if you just don't do the trade in the first place, you don't have to worry about that. Well, the trade's already been done, okay? That was Benning's problem. Now, Elvin and Rutherford have to go in and clean up the mess that was given to them, okay? And they're trying their best to do that. So I cut them some slack a little bit here. They're trying. They, they got themselves a really bad deal, and they're trying to make the most out of it. So let me know your guys' thoughts on the bio. Is it something you guys saw coming? It's something I've been talking about even halfway through last season. I saw that the Canucks could have bought them out. I replied to some tweets saying the Canucks are probably going to buy out OEL. Most people said that's not going to happen. They're just going to ride it out. I had this really, really sick feeling that they were going to do it. I'm actually glad they did. I think it frees up some oppositions here and allows them to actually do some stuff. So yeah, let me know down in the comments your guys' opinions. As always, if you guys are new, it'd be a lot if you guys subscribed. Like the video if you enjoyed. I'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.